Ayo, and what's up gang? Thank you once again wrestling fans for joining us back on the channel today. This is your official preview and prediction show for this Sunday's Battleground pay-per-view presented to us by Smackdown Live from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and we are here to talk about it right here and right now on the Sledgehammer Wrestling Show. Let's do it and get to it. <laughs> WWE presents Battleground this Sunday, like I said, from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. I am Nick Nightmare. This is your undisputed microphone champion, Blue the Snowball Microphone, and we are here today to give you our thoughts and our preview and predictions for this Sunday's upcoming Battleground pay-per-view. Battleground is a great name for a pay-per-view, isn't it? It seems almost wasted in this presentation because there's really not much to this card outside of one match that I'm very, very interested in seeing. Everything else we've either seen before or there's no real reason behind. So let's get to it. SmackDown Live, actually, we didn't do a review on last week's SmackDown Live because it was kind of boring to me. If you want to crucify me for saying that, I didn't enjoy SmackDown as much. I feel like it's been showing its true colors as the B show and not B as in blue, like the champ over here. It's B as in second to the shitty episode of Raw. Now, Raw has not been great, but this week and last week uh, with the revelation of Kurt Angle's secret and um, what's been going on over there with Braun Strowman and the main event, it's been a little more intriguing to me than what's been going on on SmackDown and this weird rush to, uh, to have AJ Styles and Shinsuke Nakamura possibly facing off against each other for the United States Championship, which I think is beneath the both of them and is absolutely beneath the match that will go down when these two finally lock horns. Thankfully, this is not going to happen at Battleground, but um, let, let's get to this card. We're going to start off right at the bottom of the card. This is the match I expect to take place on the preview show if they don't use that time to solve the mystery of who's been messing with the fashion police, Brizongo promising to bring this to a conclusion after they received uh, Fandango's horse's head in a box on SmackDown Live last Tuesday. And um, this has been the most entertaining thing on SmackDown for me. It's the one segment I absolutely look forward to, and I hope that they don't blow this and give us some kind of lackluster bullshit uh, reveal of, of nothing. At, at least I hope it makes me laugh. That's the very least we can expect. Other than that, the opening segment of this show, most likely on the preview show, is going to be Ty Dillinger versus Aiden English, the uh, opera singer man. Now, if you don't know or are not familiar with Aiden English's days in NXT... Then you do not, do not, not donut, although I would enjoy a nice fluffy donut for breakfast this morning as you join me here on this beautiful Friday morning as we get set for the weekend. Uh, donuts and snacks aside, um, <laughs> I totally forgot where I was going with the donut thing because now I'm hungry for a delicious snack. But oh, do not <laughs> let his presentation fool you. Aiden English is a very well-trained professional wrestler. He is a superstar. And this gimmick, although it may get on your nerves, that is what it's intended to do, and it might skyrocket him to the top. If they don't waste him like they've been doing with the NXT guys, 
Case in point, his opponent Ty Dillinger, who seemed to fall off the map, except when they want to shell some shit during commercial time, and uh, Ty Dillinger's doing well at that, but we're hoping that this match proves, and they give them enough time, no matter where they place them on the card, that these guys from NXT are your top talent. They are your main events right now. They are, at the very least, your mid-card, not your opening act. Ty Dillinger versus Aiden English is the match that should be going on for the United States Championship. But instead, it's been inserted into a main event card, a main event title on this card, and uh, we'll get more into that as we go on. I fully expect, for some strange reason, Aiden English to win this match. I feel like they're going to give him the push. He's been getting the TV time, uh, even though it's been kind of pointless. But I, I see him getting the win over Ty Dillinger here. Either way, the WWE's track record with the NXT alumni has been very, very shitty. And that's including how they've been booking Shinsuke Nakamura lately. The only exception to the rule being Samoa Joe. Everybody else has just been pretty much flat after the initial first wave of NXT, which brought us the Shield and uh, everybody that followed after that. The next match on this card, and this match is going to be the sleeper match that steals the show if they don't ruin it within five minutes, is going to be Sami Zayn versus Mike Kanellis in a rematch from last Tuesday night, which shouldn't have taken place. They should have had another segment where something went on and you had Mike Kanellis make his debut in the ring at Battleground this Sunday, but that's not the way they opted to do it, even though that would be the absolutely best way to fucking do it. But they didn't do that, and they gave us the match for free on Tuesday. And we already kind of know what we're in store for. And if Tuesday's any indication, Sunday's going to be a great match. And I can't wait to see them lock up again. This was the one match I I meant when I said I'm actually looking forward to this match. This is a storyline. This is wrestling. This is an angle that's been going on. Sammy's been bumping into them, getting in their way in the back, ruining their precious love. And uh, it's coming to fruition very nicely. The match on Tuesday... Went down very well. They seem to have great chemistry. And it's going to be good. It's going to be a bomb burner. If they don't make it a five minute squash of Sami Zayn. With Maria getting involved again. And having uh, Mike Kanellis just get the win that way. I'd rather see a nice competitive match. And maybe a clean win by somebody. Would be nice nowadays. After that we have probably the what 100th. Fatal five-way of the year for the women's number one contendership spot. And that's going to be contested between Charlotte, Becky, Natty, Tamina, and Lana. Now, I fully expect Lana to win this match. And if you would ask me why, it is because of this very strange, unexplained partnership with Tamina. I have a feeling... That Tamina is going to help Lana win this match. I don't know where this story is going. I don't know where this story came from. Why it evolved. Tamina is almost like the WWE creative's way of giving Lana a Rusev. Without actually giving her Rusev. Is Tamina girl Rusev for Lana? Is she just going to protect her and guide her to the top? That remains to be seen. Some sort of double switch, double turn needs to happen here. I don't understand it. It's very strange to me. And that storyline and its heavy push on TV lately is the reason why I feel that Lana's going to win this match. It's not who I want to win this match. Not at all. My wrestling logic brain fully would expect them to give this match to Charlotte so that they can build to Charlotte versus Naomi for the Women's Championship of SmackDown at SummerSlam. That is a money match. That is a great match. And um, my only fear there is that they're just going to revert back to Charlotte Flair as the champion and around and around we go. Where I think if they really wanted to solidify Naomi, they give her the victory over somebody like the Queen and uh, make that be the launching pad, really, for her. Because she's got momentum and her gimmick is great. And I normally, normally, I would be all over her for lighting up that belt in funky colors. 
but I've gotten over that part of my wrestling angst, and with the way the world is nowadays, we can't really nitpick. And I'll tell you this much, it's still better than that fucking red belt on Raw. So I will take it, and it looks pretty fucking dope, and it goes with her gimmick, she's glow, she's got the glow, you make the belt glow, it's fantastic. That's just a little sidebar I wanted to throw in there. That's who I would want. You could pull the same thing off with Becky Lynch, but having a good Becky Lynch versus a good Naomi for the title doesn't really sell itself. So somehow you have to have a heel win this match. Charlotte is the only one that could skirt the line of heel babyface, which is kind of what she's doing. She's like best D friends with Becky, but she's still like a bitch to everybody else. And you can see when she made her little comment towards Becky Lynch on, on Tuesday before they had a very good match between the two of them, which is another wasted opportunity for the WWE to build something special by just throwing it out there with no advertisement, nothing beforehand, just a impromptu matchup between two great women's wrestling competitors. And it was just that. It was a very good match. It was absolutely great, and I can't wait to see them go down at it again. And uh, But that, as I said, I would see Charlotte winning this match, but... In some weird twist, I just have a gut feeling that Lana's going to come out with the win and be going up for the third time against Naomi and uh, probably surprise us all by lasting more than one minute and actually having a competitive match. I don't know. I don't know. That's what I feel. Shinsuke Nakamura. My favorite disappointment in the WWE versus Baron Corbin, the Money in the Bank contract winner. This feud... Although the match itself has potential to be good, just makes no sense to me. And I know, you know, they had beaten each other up behind the scenes, but just it it begs the question of do they really know what they have in Nakamura? Do they really know what they want to do with Nakamura? Why did they bring him up if their only intention was to have him come out, do his little entrance dance to that awesome fucking song, and hype up the crowd, and then be wasted. I just feel like he's been wasted. Everything up until this point, including this match with Baron Corbin, it just has no point to me. Shinsuke is not going to gain anything. And if Shinsuke beats Baron Corbin, what does Baron Corbin gain out of this match? He's the Money in the Bank contract winner. Neither one of these guys, or one of these guys, I should say, is going to come out on the losing end of this and look bad. And you don't want that for either one of these competitors. And if you want to give us more of this double count out, double disqualification, smosh, and bullshit, it's going to damage them as well these guys need to be competing and winning especially your money in the bank contract winner you can't have him walking around losing to the best people in the business and then he's just going to walk out one day and win the championship and now i mean come on it just looks bad and i don't like this match at this time under these circumstances but the match should be good because shinsuke nakamura between the ropes does not disappoint and Baron Corbin has really come into his own and and I want to give him credit for that and I'm tr not trying to take anything away from this match I just really don't feel anything for this particular matchup the new face of America AJ Styles going up against Kevin Owens for AJ Styles is newly acquired United States Championship that he won from Kevin Owens in Madison Square Garden just a few weeks ago this match, I don't know how to call, honestly, because I was initially going into this match before Madison Square Garden just thinking AJ was going to win the title from Kevin Owens. Now this is Kevin Owens' rematch since losing the title, and are they going to give it back to Kevin Owens? That would make no sense. Uh, AJ Styles having the title makes no sense. He is so far above the United States title, and I know I really shouldn't say that because it's been held by the likes of Ric Flair and Harley Race and all of the greats. You could just go up and down the line from Sting to to anybody else you could possibly think of that has held that title pre-WWE days. Its lineage is, is based in guys like 
uh, Ricky the Dragon Steamboat, and countless NWA legends that just made that belt such a special thing to hold. You know what I mean? And now it's was relegated to the mid-card by the WWE. It has not been showcased in that great of a light as, until John Cena grabbed it and did the open challenge thing, which should have been something that just stuck to the belt. If you're the United States champion, these are the terms. You must always be ready to have your open challenge on whatever brand you exist on. That should just be a caveat of the belt. It would make it so much more worth having and you would const almost like a television championship when the US champ is in town he's going to defend that belt cuz he's the champ of the country it would make it, it it would actually make it better than the heavyweight championship or the universal championship and that's probably why they wouldn't do such a thing although it did great when Cena did it and i just want to see um the title be able to be brought to that prevalence by guys that need to learn and earn that spot. AJ Styles is way past the United States Championship. He's way past the Intercontinental Championship. As much as he'd love to have that prestigious belt just to add it to his collection, because we all want to be Intercontinental Champion once in our life, he's above it. He is the World Heavyweight Champion. That's what he should have around his waist. Shinsuke is the guy that should be building up against him fighting for that belt, not the United States Championship. And that should be taking place in a few months, way down the line, at the biggest show of the year. Because that is the biggest match the WWE could put on. That doesn't include Samoa Joe or Brock Lesnar. AJ Styles most likely, unless they decide to do some weird thing, which I'm not putting it past the WWE... I believe AJ Styles comes out with the win, solidifies himself as the United States Champion, goes on to that open challenge thing, and maybe we get to see AJ versus, you know, Ty Dillinger, or AJ versus Aiden English. And hopefully Shinsuke Nakamura don't come calling for the United States Championship anytime soon, although he definitely did tease that on Tuesday night. The tag team titles will be on the line as the champions, the Usos, who have been on an absolute tear lately. They have just been fucking great since they've come back from their injury and given back the titles well deserved because they've been the best tag team on SmackDown. Not that there's a lot to choose from nowadays, being that they're ripping everybody apart. But they will be going one-on-one -on -one against the New Day and I expect the New Day to win the championships here. They shouldn't. And the Usos should remain on top. They've just been so damn good. And the, the new vision that they're portraying and the day one-ish, it, it's just great. It fits them. They look comfortable in their persona. The crowd is with it. The new song is great. Let them have a nice long run as tag team champions. They've done it before. They certainly have the talent. They certainly have the pedigree to warrant a nice long tag team championship. The New Days did their history. They had their day. Let them be the first prevalent tag team to go down to the Usos and then let the Usos go on and do whatever the hell you're going to do. You're going to do a tag team tournament. You're going to start making new tag teams. You're going to have them go up against the High Pros next. Whatever you're going to do, just make them go through people one after the other until you build them up or build up a a tag team worthy of facing and dethroning the Usos, which may just be the Authors of Pain or somebody else called up from NXT later this year. So I would hope that that's the direction that they're going to go and give the Usos their day because they deserve it right now, man. It's hands down. I don't want to see the New Day as champs again. I say the Usos come out on top. WWE might say something different. In the most pointless match on the card, we have John Cena versus Rusev in a flag match. And little info on your buddy Nick Nightmare here, I fucking hate flag matches. They are probably the worst match that I could think of. Even worse than putting anything on the pole. Actually, the only match worse than a flag match is a Judy Bagwell on a forklift match. Thank you, Vince Russo, jerk off. But 
I hate flag matches. Did I say that? Because that's the bottom line. This is the most pointless match. I don't know which stipulation they're going to go with. I, <laughs> I've seen so many different variations of a flag match. There's been, you know, uh, just get retrieve your flag or retrieve their flag and, and break it. There's, I, I don't know. He, John Cena is going to have to just grab the United States flag off the post. Is that really going to be the ending of, of this match? It's, and what does it do for Rusev? Rusev is making his in-ring return, and we are starting him off exactly where we left him. What is the point of this? You, this should be Jinder Mahal's spot. A flag match with John Cena at a pay-per-view. So that possibly maybe he could start to get over that way. Not be the heavyweight champion of the world. But this match is just so useless. It's going to do nothing for John Cena because everybody knows he's going to win. It's going to do nothing for Rusev even if he wins. Because if Rusev happens to get the victory, which he won't. What is he just grabbing a flag off a pole? He's not actually beating... John Cena, so what are we accomplishing for either one of these characters? John Cena's looked at as more of a patriot. Who? How much more patriotic can you get than John Cena? The guy pisses red, white, and blue. Comes right out of his schnong. Bang! Red, white, blue. A rainbow of fucking America. I, I don't understand the point of it. And this is the one match that I will probably go to the bathroom for. And I think I might Carbo load maybe on some Taco Bell before the show, so I have to take a nice long shit because the only match that's going to follow this match is our World Heavyweight Championship match in the Punjabi prison, which actually I'm going to throw that right below the flag match. And Judy Bagwell. is <laughs> three top three worst matches ever. Judy Bagwell on a forklift, flag matches of any kind for any country, and the fucking Punjabi prison. It is the ugliest thing I've ever seen. And I'm going to be honest with you guys. I was excited for the first one with the great Kali and Batista. I thought that was going to be good when I they first showed it. I was like, this is interesting. But then when the match actually took place, and then there was, I believe there was no Batista, and then they, they inserted the big show instead or something like that. I didn't go back into it because I'm trying to forget it. And I think I've done a good job so far, being that I can't clearly remember what went down. But I do remember not being able to see shit. Because the situation of the cage, outside the cage, and then inside the cage, had this like crisscross effect where you, you couldn't fucking see a thing. And it was stupid. And you have to get out of one structure and then get out of another. So essentially we're watching a climbing match. That's what the Punjabi prison is. It's a fucking rock climbing wall competition. Who can climb the fastest? Randy Orton's not going to win this match. They're probably going to stick with Jinder Mahal. How could they allow Randy Orton to beat this person who they deem the world heavyweight champion, who's supposed to be the best in their eyes, at his own game, in his own match? It shouldn't happen. The great Kali didn't lose his match. And Jinder Mahal should not lose this match. And another reason why he should not lose this match. Because good heavyweight champion babyface Randy Orton is the absolute worst kind of Randy Orton. And nobody wants to see that again. So... I can't even believe that I would say these words, but I'm hoping that they stick with this gender thing just long enough to get somebody better the World Heavyweight Championship. In fact, if I were them, best case scenario right now, let Kevin Owens get the United States Championship back. Maybe not at Battleground, but somehow, maybe... You know, AJ loses it in an open challenge to an up-and-coming kid. And then Kevin Owens goes and takes it from him. Fine. Or leave it with the kid. Whatever. Have AJ lose that. And AJ Styles versus Jinder Mahal should take place 
at SummerSlam, where AJ Styles is crowned the World Heavyweight Champion. And then you maneuver that move into a long-standing feud with Shinsuke, which I'm going to harp on all fucking year long, because that match needs to happen for the Heavyweight Championship at WrestleMania. Any sooner than that, and the WWE's blowing their load too soon and disappointing all the pretty girls out there that wanted a nice, long, fun ride. But you came too quickly to conclusion. And on that note, that is going to be the conclusion of this preview and prediction show for WWE Battleground this Sunday live on the WWE Network pre-show starting at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time right here in New York City. And the show, of course, starting at 8 p.m. Don't miss it, you guys. It's, ah, why am I saying don't miss it? It ain't going to be anything that great. And if it is, and even if it isn't, I will be here to bring you my thoughts and my views and my opinions and my review. Coming this Sunday, following the pay-per-view. Thank you all so very, very much for being with me here today. Blue, the champ of microphones, he appreciates it probably more than I do. That's why he's the champ. I am your host, Nick Nightmare. This has been the Sledgehammer Wrestling Show right here. See it? Right here on Sledgehammer TV. Don't forget to stay tuned for the review after the show on Sunday. Thank you all once again to all my new subscribers that came along this weekend. You guys fucking rule. It's really late. We have to render this shit and get it up there for your beautiful eyes tomorrow morning. Enjoy a delicious, tasty breakfast snack for me. And we are out of here. Thank you for watching, and we will see you next time right here on the Sledgehammer Wrestling Show. Have a good one, guys.